Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, we're going to implement the stopwatch. And for that, I want to create two live data. One live data that gives us the current time run in seconds and a live data that gives us the current time run in milliseconds. And the reason why I have those two live data is that on the one hand, in our tracking fragment, we want to have a very accurate time, so the time in milliseconds. But when we show the notification, in the notification, we don't want the time that accurate because usually it's not a good practice to update a notification that often, so several time in a second. So that's why the notification will get updates each second and the tracking fragment will up get updates much more frequent. Not each millisecond, but close to that. So first of all, I want to create a live data, private live data here private val time run in seconds that doesn't belong in the companion object here because we only need that live data inside of this service because that's the place where we will show the notification later or we, where we will update the notification later and that will just be a mutable live data of type long because usually when we have milliseconds then we store that in a long format or seconds and then we will have the second life data inside of the companion object because we want to observe on changes from the outside from our tracking fragment on that live data. And that will be a val time run in millis. And that is equal to a li mutable live data of title long again. Close that off and that's already it for our two live data values. Then we can scroll down and let's implement a function that starts our timer here. So that is the function that will track the actual time and also trigger our observers or our live data so our observers can observe on those time changes. And for that function, we need quite a bunch of member variables that save some time values. First of all, that is a var is timer enabled, which is set to false initially. And by the way, let's make this private here. Then we're going to have a private var lab time, which I'll set to 0L. So that is the time from the beginning when the timer started. So when we click on start timer or start run, then we're going to add time to this lab time. But when we stop the timer and then resume it, this lab time will start at zero again. So basically just the time of us clicking on start and us clicking on pause again. Then we need to save the total time run. So just time run, which is also equal to zero L. So that will be the time, the total time of our run. So that means all of, all of our lab times added together make up our total time. And we're going to have a private var time started and set that to zero L. So that is just the timestamp when we started the timer. And finally, we will have a private var last second timestamp. I will actually explain that when we need it because right now it's quite difficult to understand that. But we're going to set that to zero L again. And now we are ready to implement our um, start timer function. So private function start timer. And now we have to think about when do we call this start timer function. And the answer to that is always when we start or resume our service. And in contrast to this start foreground service function, this function only gets called when we start our service for the first time, but not when we resume it. And for that reason, I will take that add empty polyline out of the start foreground service function and move it to the start of our start timer function. Because Whenever we start our timer, that means that we either paused our service before or that's just the first start of our service. And that also means that we need to add an empty polyline to our list. And then whenever we start a timer, we also want to post the value true to our is tracking live data is tracking dot post value true. We also want to set our time started to system dot current time milli, so just the current timestamp of milliseconds. And we want to set our is timer enabled boolean to true now. So and now we have to think about how do we want to track the current time or stop the current time. And I want to implement that with a coroutine because we don't want to call our observers like all the time. 
that is very bad performance wise. Instead, what I want to do is I want to track the, the current time in a coroutine and then after that simply delay that coroutine for a few milliseconds that isn't noticeable for a normal human, but it's noticeable a lot for the computer. And that's why I want to start a coroutine here in a coroutine scope dispatchers.main and call that launch on that. And in here we will have a while loop that loops as long as we're tracking. So while is tracking dot value. So as long as we're tracking, we will execute that while loop and we will track the time. And in here, the first thing we need to do is we need to calculate the current lap time. So we set the lap time to the current timestamps. So system dot current time millis minus time started. So maybe it helps you if I comment that code a little bit. That is just the time difference between now and time started. Next, we're going to update the value of our live data. So time run in millis, the post value, and that is our total time run plus our new lap time. So here we just post the new lap time and that is equal to our total time, of course, because we want to observe the total time every time. And that's why we add those two together. We don't just want to post the lap time here. And as a next step, we're going to worry about our second live data, our time run in seconds. And now I should also get clear why we have that last second timestamp variable, because we're going to check if time run in millis dot value is greater than or equal to our last second timestamp plus a thousand milliseconds. So what the heck is that last second timestamp used for? So that will basically be the last whole second value that has passed in milliseconds. So if our time run in millis value is let's say 1550 milliseconds, which will be the pre exact value of our time run, then this last second timestamp will be one second because that has been the last whole second that has passed. And if we add up those 1000 milliseconds that one second, and our time run in millis value is greater than that, then we know that a new whole second has passed and we should update our time run in seconds live data. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have our time run in seconds live data and post a new value. And we want to post the new time run in seconds. So we have to get the old time run in seconds by writing time run in seconds dot value. And we just want to add up one to that. And after that, we are going to use our last second timestamp and add a thousand milliseconds to that because now we reached our new whole second. And that's almost it for a coroutine here. The only thing we now want to do is we want to delay the coroutine so we don't update our observers, our live data all the time. I only want to update them each 50 milliseconds. That won't be noticeable for the user, but as I said, that is very much noticeable for the Android phone. And here we just want to call delay and we have to import that. And for that, I also want to specify a constant for the delay here. Let's go inside of our constants file and have a const val timer update interval and I'll set it to 50L. Then we can go back to tracking service and simply pass that timer update interval in the delay function. And then outside of the while loop here, that is important not to write this inside of the while loop. We want to use our time run, our total time run and add up our lap time because if we go out outside of the while loop, that means we're not tracking anymore because is tracking that value is false in that case. And then we simply want to add up the last lap time to our total time run. And that's it for our start timer function. On the one hand, we want to call that in the else block of our on start command function when we get that action start or resume service. Right now we have that start program service function. But as I said in the last video, or in one of the previous videos, uh, we are not going to leave it like that. Instead, we're going to start the timer here. So that means we're going to resume the service. And in our pause service function here, if we hold control and click on that, here we also want to set our is timer enabled to false. And by the way, also 
scroll down to our start program service function. Um, here we want to call our start timer function to, of course, start timer. And that's basically it. So that was the first part of this video. In the second part, I will create a utility function that will take a time value, a milliseconds value, and format it in a nice way, in a stopwatch way, where we have our hours, our minutes, our seconds, and our milliseconds. And for that, I want to go inside of our tracking utility class, make a little bit more space here. And down here, we're going to have a function, get formatted stopwatch time. That function will take the milliseconds that we're going to format, which is a long format, and we're going to have a boolean here, include millis, which is false by default. Oh, and of course, that must be a boolean here. So that is just a boolean value to toggle if we want to show the milliseconds in the formatted time or not because in our tracking fragment, we want that accurate time, but in our notification, we don't want it. And in some other places we will add later, we also don't want it. And of course, this function must return a string because that is the formatted string that we want to create here. And now inside of this function, we just need to make some time calculations. First of all, I want to make a copy of that milliseconds value we pass as a parameter because we need to make some calculations with that and we cannot just subtract something from that milliseconds value as a parameter because that is usually passed as a val. So I just want to make a copy of that and calculate with that. So val var milliseconds, milliseconds is equal to ms. Then the first thing we want to check here is how many hours we can get out of those milliseconds we passed here. So val hours is equal to time unit and import this first one here time unit dot milliseconds dot two hours. And here we want to pass our milliseconds. So that will just convert our milliseconds to hours and we want to pass those milliseconds. So we just convert those milliseconds to hours basically and save the result in hours. And then we can use our milliseconds here and subtract time unit dot hours this time dot two milliseconds. So now we want to convert the hours back to milliseconds. And here we pass our hours. So why do we actually do this? First, we convert our milliseconds to hours and then our hours to milliseconds. The reason is just that we need that hours variable to later display that in our string that we return here. Next, we're going to have the minutes, well, minutes, and that's going to be calculated by the remaining milliseconds because we subtracted the hours already here. So we get the minutes by using time unit dot milliseconds again, dot two minutes, and we pass our remaining milliseconds here. And after that, we can use our milliseconds again and subtract time unit dot minutes this time, dot two millis, and we pass our minutes here. And then the same for the seconds, so val seconds, is equal to time unit dot milliseconds dot two seconds. And we pass our milliseconds here, our remaining milliseconds. And now we have uh, those three values here, hours, minutes, and seconds. That is enough if we don't want to include milliseconds. So we can check if include millis is false, then we already want to return the string and also write a colon after that. So if you don't understand that here, we just check if our hours are less than 10. In that case, we want to add that zero before those hours here. And if hours is greater than 10 or equal to 10, then we just prepend an empty string before those hours. So we want to we won't prepend anything here. And now we are going to do the same for the rest of our string for the rest of our time units. We are going to have an if statement here if minutes less than 10, we want to prepend zero, else nothing. Then we want to prepend, uh, append our minutes with a colon. And finally also check if seconds is less than 10, then a zero, else nothing, and our seconds. 
And if we want to include milliseconds, then we're not going to go inside of that if branch. Instead, what we're going to do is we want to use our milliseconds and subtract time unit dot seconds dot two milliseconds, pass our seconds here. And we also want to use our milliseconds and divide them by 10 because we only want to have a two digit number for the milliseconds, not a three digit number. And then we can simply return our result. For that, we just copy that block here. Also append a colon here and a new line for our milliseconds. So if our milliseconds is less than 10, we want to prepend a zero, else nothing, and then use our milliseconds here. And that's basically it for our formatted stopwatch time function. And then now we can go inside of our tracking fragment create a new variable here, global variable, private var current time in millis. So just the current time of the run, how long the run was, and that is going to be equal to zero L. Then we can go to our subscribe to observers function because we are going to add another observer here, which we get from tracking service dot time run in millis dot observe as our view lifecycle owner and observer block. And first of all, we're going to set our current time in millis to the new value. Then we want to get the formatted time, formatted time by writing tracking utility dot get formatted stopwatch time. We're going to pass our current time millis and we want to include the milliseconds. So we pass true here. And then we're going to use our TV timer text view and set its text to our formatted time. And what I almost forgot is that we also need to post initial values in our tracking service in our live data. As you probably know, we have that post initial values function and we forgot to post the initial values for our time run in seconds and time run in millis. Otherwise, you will most likely get a null pointer exception here. So we are going to use time run in seconds dot post value and post zero L for the first time. And we're going to use our time run in millis and also post zero L. And that's basically it. Now we can run our app and see if everything is working. I'm going to launch my emulator here. And let's see. Actually, we don't even need that location simulation here, but I will enable it anyways. Let's click on start root, click on continue here start a new run. And if we now click on start, then you can see our stopwatch is working perfectly fine. And also if we rotate the device, then it's still observing the correct value, rotate it back. And also as you can see, the map line is working perfectly fine on the screen rotation. If you click on stop here, then the stopwatch is stopping. If we click on start, it's resuming. So it works as expected. So I hope this video was not too confusing with all that time calculation stuff. If it helped you to understand all that, then please leave a like and a comment what you think about this video and also make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Have a nice day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.